thanks for watching this video the moment you get a lovely video you like subscribe then you share i said you like you subscribe then you share i'm very grateful to get a noble bishop james nana of Oriata on our channel uh, he has been doing a whole lot of things but today i would like to have a, a few chats with him so that he can open up his motive and uh, things he has been doing all so far to help people who have been drug addicts in their life. Bishop James. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everything is fine. By the grace of God. Wow. You look always young. <laughs> what is the secret? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm 62 years. Six? Uh, this year, this year uh, I guess I'll be 63. Wow. Yeah, by the grace of God. Good. We heard you have been helping people who have drug addicts. Yes, uh, it's not only drug addicts. Um, my vision is to take care of drug addicts, drunk cats, uh, the destitute, the street children, and the prostitute. Uh, because the vision God gave me when I became born again. So probably you have a uh, focus on prostitute and all those things you have been mentioned. Yes. Why those people? Uh, you know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, mm -hmm. it said, And you shall receive power mm -hmm. when the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. The word power there means in, in, in Greek is called iscus kratus. Is gratis, gratis. Okay. meaning the ability to produce your kind. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're a carpenter, you know the language of carpenters. Mm -hmm. If you're a doctor, you know how to minister to doctors. Mm -hmm. If you look at, at the uh, bishop that he was nurse, okay. if you look at his ministry, he attracted a lot of doctors and a lot of nurses and all that because of what God lifted him to and he was able to minister to his life. Okay. And so I was a drug addict myself. Oh, I see. And I was a drug addict and a prostitute because I used to pimp girls. Mm. I was a pimp. At where? Uh, in, in Lagos, I was pimping girls and I took them also to Germany. You know, when I took them to Germany to, to pimp them. So when I became born again, God said, you need to go back and do the things you did in order to redeem them. So that is the reason why. Drunkard, drunkard because I was also a drunkard. So you have been a drunkard before? A serious drunkard. I smoked weed, I yeah. smoked weed, I smoked okay. cocaine, I smoked heroin, I was taking amphetamine, LSD, mushroom. Wow. And, and oh, I was a DJ in the club in Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I learned all this from there. But how long have you been doing all those things? It, you have uh, 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. How long? Have I involved myself in drugs? In drugs, like yes. Oh, I involved myself in drugs for almost nine years. Almost nine years. Yes, almost nine years because I, I, came, I came down from Germany in 1988. Okay. And the first uh, person I met at the airport who was the custom officer okay. at that time was a drug addict. Okay. Uh, and he's the one that actually, uh, when he saw me, he saw the way I dressed. When he looked at me, he asked me a question, do you know Yoyo? Mm -hmm. And uh, coincidentally, Yoyo is supposed to be my, my white lady's brother. His name was Yoyo. Then you were marrying a white lady? Yes, I was married to a white lady. Okay. And he said, the brother's name is Yoyo. And so when he said, do you know Yoyo? I said, oh, Yoyo is my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Not knowing Yoyo is a name given to cocaine in the inner corpus. And I didn't know. So when he said, when I said to him, Yoyo is my brother-in-law, okay. he stopped working. And because I know you, so he thought I was talking about okay. Nice. So he stopped working, helped me out, took me to, for me to go and sleep in the south. It was in the night. Okay. And the customer was, so I was, I was not afraid to go with him. Mm -hmm. And then after he took me home and gave me a call, he said, now let's go for Yoyo. And I said, well, Yoyo is in Germany. <laughs> And it became a very serious thing. Okay. But I will tell you the, the full story later because it's a long story. Oh, okay. Yes. But long story, but we are going to cut it short in a certain situation. Okay. But first of all, let me ask, what took you into drugs and all this? Uh, at, when I was in 
Germany. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was taking was we. I was taking we. Okay. You started with we? Yes. I didn't know anything about amphetamine, LSD, uh, mushroom, and cocaine. Mushroom? Mushroom. Where is it mushroom? Yeah, there is a drug called mushroom. Okay. It's, a, it's a common mushroom, but it's a very dangerous one. When you smoke it, it takes you to another level. Oh, I see. You know? Yeah. And um, I became a DJ in Germany. Okay. And in the club, one, one day I was spinning, and a friend of mine who was a Ghanaian came and signaled me to follow him to the washroom. Okay. So when I went to the washroom with him, he showed me 11,000 Dutch in 1987. 11,000 Dutch mark. When I saw that money, I said, Bobby, what are you doing? Because those days you can buy a car of 200 Dutch mark. Okay. And so you can buy over 10 cars and ship them. So I said, what are you doing here with all this money? It was in his pocket. Okay. I said, mm, I have a lot. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a cocaine dealer. Oh, I, I deal cocaine. I said, whoa. If I were you, I'll go, I've gone home. Okay. That same night, he was arrested. And then, uh, Two weeks after, a lady came to the club and asked me whether I know cocaine. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, yeah, yeah, I know cocaine very well. Okay. And she gave me six kilos of co cocaine. Six kilos? She gave all the six kilos to me, and I kept it in my house, and I started selling it. Mm -hmm. I finished selling all, and then the police heard that I was selling cocaine, so they were looking for me, and I ran away to Ghana. So that's and at that time, I didn't know how to smoke until I met Nikki, the custom officer at the airport, okay. who eventually took me to Tudu. Mm -hmm. And that was where I saw how they smoke it. Because what I was doing was that I only, when you come to the club, I sell, sell it for you, you go, I give it to you, you go. I didn't even know how they prepare it. Not knowing you can cook it and it will turn into a crack fall. Mm -hmm. That was the first day I saw how they smoke it. And I watched this guy, I bought for him. I said, I don't, I don't smoke okay. 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 And I bought for him, and the guy was so aggressive. When he finished smoking, he took me, he lured me into another house. Okay. And the guy was a guy that had lived in Germany before. He speaks German, so he started talking to me in German language. And the guy was shivering. That was the first time I saw somebody that is that is on techie. Techie has a grip in it. The, the guy was just shaking. You're not getting the cocaine. You have not gotten it. You are addicted to it. Not only cocaine, especially uh, the, the, the Thai, Thai white and the, and the heroin. Thai white is what? Thai white is also another form of drug. Wow. It's, a, it's a, it made in Thailand. Okay. Okay, and it's white, like cocaine, but it's not cocaine. Uh, that one also, they, they break it in, in, in pieces and put it in in either in, on cigarette okay. or you can chase it okay. uh, or you can mix it with your with your with your we okay. and then you can get a double high but all these are look at what is it costing very very expensive very expensive very expensive wow but you were getting money to buy those things. you can you, you see when you are hooked to it you do anything to make the money to, to smoke because if you don't smoke you are like Something is you uh, has arrested you and, and is forcing you to go and take it. Good. What was your first experience? The first yes. experience was the following day when I met Nikki, the uh, immigration officer, the custom officer. Yeah. When I met him, they were they were driving me to my village. Okay. He and the, this, this other guy yeah. that speaks German, and we, they say we should pass there to do an airport for them, and they were smoking, and I was looking at them. The way they were engaged in the thing, when they see any little white substance on the ground, they will look at it and chase. They can follow it out from this office outside, still searching for white thing on the floor. So I look at it, I was so curious. Okay. And the other guy spoke in German language to me that, oh, uh, it, it, it's not a problem, you can smoke it, it's good. When you smoke, you see. So I was lured into it, and I took the first chunk. Very curious. Yes, and they put it on the on the on the pipe for me to smoke it. And the guy told me, just melt it and draw the smoke. And when you draw it, seize your breath. Okay. And and I did that, and all of a sudden I saw myself in the cloud nine. Cloud nine. Yes, where all things are found. Wow. And I, I begin, when I came down. I said, whoa, what a feeling. I want to go back. Mm. And that is the, the same day I was hooked to it. Because the first feeling you get when you smoke it 
You can never get it again. And always you keep on striving that you want to get there. That is what brought her addiction. So I was hooked up to it the same day. And I bought a lot that day. We went on the way going to my hometown. We we'll pack the car, we we'll blow it, then we we'll go. When I got to my hometown, then my own finish, I had to run quickly to Accra. And that was how I became an addict and I blew everything off. I messed everything that I came with. My truck I came down with 360,000 Dutch my cash in 1988. Mm. Can you imagine? 1988, 360,000 Dutch I blew it within three years. Wow. I blew it. Hey, my lovely brother and sisters watching this video, this is just the beginning. It's a one on one talk with Bishop James Nana of Riata. Who were, who were once a uh, drug addict, entered into me, we, we were to, who was this, I mean, the lesser, right? The least, yeah. the the least, least was, uh, was into me, cocaine, okay. heroin, yeah. and all those drugs. But by God's grace, he's now in the rank of bishop, calling on people who are drug addict to quit. And it's a one-on-one -on -one talk. Thanks for watching this video. When you're watching, you like, you subscribe, then you share. Then Bishop, uh, in a nutshell, when you see people oh, into dust, how do you feel? Uh, well, I feel very bad okay. simply because I know they are struggling. Okay. They want to get out, but they can't because I see cocaine and anything that you become addicted to as a spirit. Okay. There's a spirit behind it okay. because anything that you try to do, you cannot do it. There is something actually ruling you. Mm -hmm. Paul said the other day, the good things I want to do, I cannot do it. But the evil things I don't want to do, that is what I found myself doing. Then he went on to say, if I continue to do this, then I'm not the one, but sin living in me. Mm -hmm. There is some power called sin that is living in you that will influence you to do what you cannot, you don't want to do. And so when I see them, uh, I see them everywhere. Some of them come to me, beg me for money, lie to, for me to give them money. But the moment you come, uh, the Lord will tell me that oh, this is a, it's a drug addict. Okay. And then I will ask you, you spoke. The person will lie, yeah, then I will, I will go back and tell, then the person will confess. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I do smoke. You see anyone on the street who is a drug addict? I will know. Exactly. I will know. Wow. That you, you can even dress nice, and you come to me, <laughs> I will right. know. When I hold your hands, your fingers, and I'll look through your fingers, I'll tell you. Back and day, then the person will confess mm. that yes, I, I do smoke. So you see anyone on the street who is a drug addict? I will know. Exactly. I will know. Wow. It doesn't matter. You, you can even dress nice and you come to me. <laughs> and you I will right. know. When I hold your hands, your fingers, and I'll look through your fingers, I will tell you. Wow. Sometimes I'll look on your teeth and I will know. Sometimes I'll look in your eyes and I will know. Wow. Yes. So uh, we will just find a time, go deep, and you follow the trend of your call and you be <coughs> successful. So anytime I see people that are on drugs and they are willing to change, they want to stop, I have the passion to help them. Okay. And I go in there, pray for them, and try to give them all the help they need okay. so that they can come out totally. That is what I said to you the other day that. I don't accept people who are not ready to change. Mm -hmm. If you are ready to change and you come to me, I will do what I can to help you. Mm -hmm. Because you can't force the horse to a riverside, yes, but true. you can't force it to break. True. True. Bishop, once again, thanks for being with us for one or two chats on Thank this you. channel. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, thanks for watching our video. Once again, we'll be back. So like, subscribe, then you share. Anytime you meet our video, kindly please. You like, you subscribe, then you share. We will always kindly give you more and much video that will help you, will motivate you, encourage you in your life. Thank you. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.